Welcome back to Passionately Catholic. I'm Anthony Digman, and together we are falling more in love with God, enriching our prayer life, and growing in virtue as we explore one of the greatest spiritual classics of all time, Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. Today is part three, chapter 26, titled, Of Conversation and First, How to Speak to God. Be sure to find the link in the description below to get your free copy of this book, as well as sign up for emails with each video of this series in sequential order, and join our Passionately Catholic Facebook group. Please subscribe, like, and share this video so you can help evangelize with us. Let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be to you, God, as we come before you in our brokenness and sorrow for our sin. We thank you for your unconditional love and mercy. Please grant the prayers we offer today, and in all things, thy will be done. Come, Holy Spirit, and St. Francis de Sales, pray for us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. I really would really consider this like really speaking about God. How do we do that? How do we speak about God? Physicians judge to a great extent as to the health or disease of a man by the state of his tongue, and our words are a true test of the state of our soul. By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned, the Savior says. We are apt to apply the hand quickly to the place where we feel pain, and so too the tongue is quick to point out what we love. Isn't that so true, right? Like it's whatever somebody really likes to do, especially as a teacher, I've noticed this, or talking to people in a social interaction, people who don't like to speak very much, they might be really quiet, uh, is to get in, them on a subject that they really like. You know, what are you most passionate about? What are you most excited about? What do you like to do the most? You know, a student in high school, for example, if you can learn what they really like to do, you can really use that to kind of apply the subject matter, especially in my case, theology and religion. Uh, we've got a lot of farmers in our area. This is a very agricultural rural Iowa area. So the more I know about farming, even though I have next to zero experience related to it, although I grew up on a farm till I was about six years old, so I have some experience and some understanding of it, but the more that I know, at least abstractly, that I'm able to relate to these kids or relate theology and religion to that, the more analogies I can bring up, the better. And that's exactly what St. Francis de Sales does, God bless his soul, uh, in Introduction to the Devout Life, all the great analogies that he gives to try to make this stuff as relatable as possible. So I really appreciate that immensely, okay? Uh, but here, here's the thing. What we really love, we can talk about. People can talk for hours about the things that they most love, okay? So this is what St. Francis de Sales is saying, is that our tongue belies what we truly love. Let's continue with St. Francis. If you love God heartily, my child, you will often speak of him among your relations, household, and familiar friends, and that because the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Even as the bee touches not save honey with his tongue, so should your lips be ever sweetened with your God, knowing nothing more pleasant than to praise and bless his holy name. As we are told that when St. Francis uttered the name of the Lord, he seemed to feel the sweetness lingering on his lips and could not let it go. But always remember when you speak of God, that he is God, and speak reverently and with devotion, not affectedly or as if you were preaching, but with a spirit of meekness, love, and humility, dropping honey from your lips like the bride in the canticles, in devout and pious words as you speak to one another around in your secret heart, and while asking God to let this soft heavenly dew sink into their minds as they hearken. And remember, very specially, always to fulfill this angelic task meekly and lovingly, not as though you were reproving others, but rather winning them. It is wonderful how attractive a gentle, pleasant manner is, and how much it wins hearts. Take care, then, never to speak of God or those things which concern Him in a merely formal, conventional manner, but with earnestness and devotion, avoiding the affected way in which some professedly religious people are perpetually interlarding their conversation with pious words and sayings after a most unseasonable and unthinking manner. Too often they imagine that they really are themselves as pious as their words, which probably is not the case. You know, how true is that of us, too? Like we, we think, yeah, I'm, I'm close to God. Yeah, I'm growing in virtue and holiness. But in reality, we can be so far from that. One of the things I really like about this in terms of speaking about God is 
how we should use God's name, right? The second commandment is thou shalt not use the name of the Lord your God in vain. That's really key. And what does that mean to use God's name in vain? And to do something in vain means to do it without the intended result. Okay. So if I use God's name in vain, if I say, and I'm going to do this for example, which means it's not in vain. It has a very strong purpose here is if I say something like, oh my God, in exasperation. Oh my God. Okay. People do that all the time. Or they say, OMG. Okay. What we're doing there is we're taking God's name in vain and we're breaking the second commandment. That's a very serious thing, worthy of serious consideration on our part. And I was certainly guilty of this until I learned more about it. And I read the catechism when it talks about under the second commandment, what taking God's name in vain is really all about. And I was really convicted by that. And I'm like, I've got to change this. Right. And I invited everybody else around me. Hey, if you hear me say, oh my God, as an exasperation, as as opposed to me intentionally saying, dear Lord, my God, I'm actually crying out to God. Tell me about it. Help me be aware of it. And the more aware of it I became, the quicker I became at apologizing to God. So now whenever I say God's name in vain like that, I quickly apologize to God and say, God, I'm really sorry. I took your name in vain. I didn't mean that. And furthermore, I learned this from my wife, blessed woman that she is. Sometimes we might be watching an action movie and somebody might take God's name in vain. And when they do that, what she would always say is, praise be Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ. Okay. Praise be God. Praise and thanks be to God. So whenever that happens, I tried to uh, took that on from her. See, I learned holy example from the people that I'm around. God bless my wife uh, and blessing my life with her is to do a virtuous thing to counteract that evil uh, when so far it is possible. Great. So, hey, remember, my friends, spend at least 10 minutes today in silent prayer with Jesus Christ. Special thanks to all of our patrons who made this episode and all that we do at Passionately Catholic possible. Be sure to find our Patreon link below to join in our mission. Make it a great day. God bless you, my friend, and I look forward to joining you again in the next episode.